This video covers important D3 Zoom FAQ. The structure of this video is as follows. The goal, the D3 Zoom frequently asked question. The solution, example code explanation, JavaScript console walkthrough, and the summary. All right, let's get started. The goal, let's take a close look at the Zoom example we created in the previous video. Did you spot something funny about how I pan and zoom on the screen? What is funny about how I interact with the data visualization is that I am only zooming and panning on the axis elements and the circle element. You can see that all of the movements I make start with my hovering over one of these elements and then moving them or zooming in or out while on them. This is because of the way the zoom behavior works. Now, let's try to do a zoom or pan if I click in the empty space. You can see on the screen that I am trying, yet nothing is happening. Nothing happens when I double click. Nothing happens when I click down to pan. Nothing happens when I use the mouse wheel to zoom in or zoom out. This is a big deal. This is why through the previous video, you've seen me do all the examples while the mouse was over one of the visual elements. First, we had to understand the basics of the zoom behavior. Now that we have understood them, we have to understand the limitations. The biggest limitation is that the zoom does not apply to empty space in between visual elements. However, we can fix this easily. This video covers how we can change our code with a few simple lines of code to make it work correctly. You can now see that it works correctly as we think it should. Something happens when I double click in the empty space. Something happens when I click down to pan in the empty space. Something happens when I use the mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out in the empty space. This fixes the issue and makes the data visualization more robust. This video will show the basics of how to make this work with the D3 zoom behavior. The D3 zoom frequently asked question. One of the most frequently asked questions about the D3 zoom behavior is why it doesn't work. Someone, or you, or me many times, constructs a visualization and then tests the zoom behavior only to find out that it doesn't work. Well, it's not that it doesn't work, it's that it only works on certain elements. It works on the X and Y axes, as well as any elements that were drawn inside of the SVG element that had the zoom behavior called on it. All of the empty space in between all of those elements does not have the zoom behavior attached to it. The second most commonly asked question about the D3 zoom behavior is, how do I fix it? This is asked almost immediately after the first question is asked. The solution. If we think back to the code we created, the inner drawing space is the SVG element that the zoom behavior was called on. The SVG group element and everything inside of it now had the zoom behavior. Let's think for a second about what visual elements the inner drawing space consists of in our visualization. Within the inner drawing space, we appended slash created an x-axis, a y-axis, and a green circle. Each of these elements were placed according to linear scales and the zoom scale. Each element was able to trigger the zoom behavior. This is because the zoom behavior gets called on an element and all of its children elements. Since the x-axis, y-axis, and the green circle are children elements of the inner drawing space, they too received the zoom behavior. Did you notice what was missing? What was missing is that the empty space between the elements is not a child element of the inner drawing space, which means that it does not have the zoom behavior attached to it, which also means that we will not be able to zoom in, zoom out, or pan by interacting with it. So the solution to the important D3 zoom FAQ question is to make the empty space a child element of the inner drawing space. What we want to do is create an SVG element that will act as the empty space between the elements. Once we have this element that acts like empty space, it will allow us to do all the zooming and panning we want. The solution is to make an SVG rectangle that behaves like the background of the whole visualization. As long as it is the same color as the background of the SVG and the HTML page it is on, it will look invisible. So the rectangle just needs to cover the area of the inner drawing space. Zooming and panning will still work the same way. You can still click on an axis, the elements you drew, or the SVG rectangle and the zooming and panning will work. The reason it works is that as we zoom and pan, we are not going to resize or rescale the SVG rectangle. This means that while the other elements are being resized and panned, the rectangle will stay in place. 
and since it is hidden, it will allow us to continue to use the hidden space. One further question that comes up is how to make sure that the rectangle always stays behind other elements we are drawing. The way to do this is to remember that in SVG drawings, the newest drawn elements stay on top of the oldest drawn elements. So what we want to do is to draw the rectangle as early as possible and then not redraw it again. Then as we are zooming and panning and redrawing the axes and SVG elements, they will continue to be redrawn on top of everything, so they will stay on top of the SVG rectangle. Let's now look at the code to see how we can construct it. Example Code Explanation If we break down the full source code of the example into sections, you can see where the drawing of the visual element starts. We add the hidden rectangle as soon as we have the inner drawing space defined. This ensures that everything drawn after this point will be newer so that it will be on top of the hidden rectangle. Because we call the zoom behavior on the inner drawing space and the hidden rectangle is a child element of the inner drawing space, it will have the zoom behavior available to it. This is the code of the rectangle. Note, it is a regular SVG rectangle. I like to add it to its own SVG group element to keep the code clean and understandable. For SVG rectangles, we have to define the X, Y, width, and height. The dimensions we want to give this rectangle are the exact same dimensions as the inner drawing space. The X coordinate is the zero point as passed through the X axis scale function. The Y coordinate is the height point passed through the Y scale axis function. These X and Y coordinate points are the very top leftmost points of the inner drawing space. The width of the rectangle is the width of the inner drawing space as passed through the x-axis scale function. The height of the rectangle is the zero point as passed through the y-axis scale function. The reason we define the x and y coordinates as the top left is so that both the height and width are positive numbers. This helps keep the code understandable and easy to read. Lastly, we give the rectangle a fill of white to match the background of the web page. This makes it look invisible. Also note that this is the only code we add, so there is no way that this rectangle can be resized or panned when the zooming happens. Next, let's take a look at how it behaves in the JavaScript console. JavaScript console walkthrough. This web page has the D3 library imported from the d3js.org website. We have opened the Chrome developer tools and are in the console section. We start by defining the variables used for the height and width of the SVG viewport as well as the D3 margins and the SVG circle. Next, we define the SVG viewport. Note that we add a border style to make it easier to see. In production environments, you do not want to apply a border to SVG elements as they are not supposed to render anything directly by themselves. That said, for this video, we use the border style to make sure we visually see what we have coded up. Next, we define the x-axis scale and y-axis scale. Next, we define the D3 SVG axis functions. Next, we define the D3 zoom behavior event listener function. Note that this doesn't do anything to the hidden rectangle we will generate. Now that we have defined the event listener function, we define the D3 zoom behavior function. Remember that the scale extent limits the zoom out and zoom in levels. With the D3 zoom behavior and event listener function defined, let's create the rest of the visualization. We create the inner drawing space. Remember that it is here where we give the SVG group element the D3 zoom behavior by calling the zoom function on it. Next is where we add the hidden rectangle. To make it more apparent, we will add the rectangle with the color red and later change it to white. You can now see the red rectangle on the screen. Since we don't have any way to tell if we are zooming in, out, or panning, we won't test it yet. Then we draw the X and Y axis on the screen. Now that we have the X and Y axis drawn as children of the inner drawing space, we should be able to test the zoom behavior. First, let's try it on the axes themselves. Both axes work great. Let's now try it on the red rectangle. This works great as well. Now, let's go into the Elements section of the Chrome Developer Tools and change the rectangle to white. The visualization now looks like it's just made up of empty space. We should still be able to zoom and pan on the empty space. Let's try it. Perfect. It works really well and allows us to zoom and pan anywhere we want. Let's move the color back to red.
Then we create the SVG circle we will use to visually help us understand the zoom and pan behaviors. The last bit of code we create is the HTML div and span elements that will hold the key information regarding what the zoom behavior is doing as we zoom in and out. First, we define the divs. Then we define the spans as child elements of the HTML div elements. And there we go. We have now entered all of the code. We know that it will work when we click on the axes and circle. Let's play with the empty space. First, we try the panning of the visualization to get a feel for how it works. You can see that it works perfectly with the circle and axis for panning. Let's now play with the zooming of the visualization to get a feel for how it works. You can see that it works perfectly with the circle and axis for zooming. Lastly, let's change the fill of the rectangle from red to white. Now that the background rectangle is white, it looks exactly like the empty space we had before, except that now we can zoom and pan anywhere we want. It is important to note that the rectangle is still inside of the SVG inner drawing space, so the zooming and panning will only work inside of the inner drawing space. And with that, we have covered the basics of thinking about and fixing the two most important B3 zoom frequently asked questions. We covered how to create an SVG rectangle and hide it so that the zooming and panning would work on the empty space of the visualization. We also created an example to showcase how it works. This technique will be useful in regular data visualizations, force layout diagrams, as well as geographic visualizations. The summary. This video covered the goal of this video, the D3 zoom frequently asked question, the solution, example code explanation, JavaScript console walkthrough, and the summary.